Or joining us right now from a White House communications director, founder of Skybridge Capital, Anthony Scaramucci, back with us. Good to see you, Anthony. Hey, good morning, guys. Your reaction big to this day. historic summit. Well, listen, I mean, it's a, it's a big day. There's a lot of moving pieces, uh, but I think they've gotten most of it right. And so um, I'm very, very hopeful. I think one thing I want to mention to our, our business viewers is that the, the next shoe to drop is the South Korean trade agreement, Maria, which has been principally already negotiated. And I think they'll start to unveil that trade agreement. And you'll see uh, that'll be a very good trade agreement for American workers, manufacturers, and American businesses. And so that will be the template for future agreements as we try to move move towards trade tariff parity with the rest of the world, which is long overdue. Some people are a little uncomfortable with stopping the military exercises, the war games. And Mary, this is something that you said earlier. This was one of those hard concessions that the president gave versus what you called soft concessions of, of, of the North. Yeah, that's right. When the North Koreans talk about complete denuclearization, it means something different than complete irreversible and verifiable denuclearization, which is what the White House, to its credit, keep saying that it wants. Um, but the North Koreans didn't give anything up here, Maria, other than a promise, the signed paper. Uh, they gave back hostages, yes, but they could just take more of them. You know, the, when the president said that military exercises are provocative, you know, that equates us with North Korea. That's wrong. It's not provocative. It's simply protecting our democratic allies. It's provocative to China and to North Korea. So when I say the president gave a hard concession there, by pausing those exercises, he did. We heard a lot of talk about feelings here, about bonhomie between the two leaders, but we didn't hear a process for complete, irreversible, verifiable denuclearization. And that has to happen fast. Remember, Mike Pompeo said earlier this year, we only had a few months until the North Koreans could hold us at risk, as he put it. So there's just, you can't let these negotiations drag out. You're going to have to see progress very quickly. Can I raise an issue? Yeah. And I, I'm yeah. curious what Anthony thinks about this. Would this have gotten done if Rex Tillerson was still in that job? Uh, well, I mean, listen. Because he was all, disliked all, all, within the State all, Department, all, quite all, frankly. All respect to Sec Secretary Tillerson is a great guy, but the chemistry between Secretary Pompeo and President Trump is, is actually way better. And so uh, maybe, maybe not, but it clearly got done when it, at a more accelerated rate as a result of the relationship between the president and Secretary Pompeo. But just to push back a little bit on the military exercises, because this is a very nonconventional leader, and he's broken the orthodoxy of the 44, 45-year establishment in the State Department and the Defense Department. And when you're sitting there with the North Korean leader, he's made two big disruptive decisions. Number one, I'm going to break that orthodoxy, give the North Korean leader legitimacy because he knows that could play well in his home state. And number two, by pulling back a little bit, he is sending a message to the Chinese, and I think it's a very positive message because he's about to hit the Chinese super hard on trade. And so what he wants the Chinese to understand is that let's peacefully, economically compete with each other, but have a very good bilateral relationship. And despite all the rhetoric on the opposition to the president, he is not a warmonger. Uh, I was only in the White House for 11 days, but I saw, three, <laughs> I saw three or four major decisions that he made. And he looked over to me, and he's a lot bigger than me. He leaned into me, and he said, and Anthony, they call me the warmonger. The me meaning is he's doing things in an unorthodox way. He's very, very good-natured about this stuff. And I think that he's going to reset the playbook as it relates to our foreign policy to the I don't positive. Think that he's, I don't think people see him as a warmonger. I don't think, I think so that. Either. I mean, he wanted to pull the troops out of What's Syria. War? What's well, well, actually, warmonger? I mean, he, 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 he wants to pull the troops out of Afghanistan. He wants to take the troops out of wait, wait. South Korea. He's been saying he wants to take troops out. Right. He yeah, called for fire and fury in August of 2007. Okay, well, I don't see him as a warmonger at all. But this, I think, is the longer-term danger. What would it be, Maria, some of his opponents? Anthony, I'd love your insights on this because it seems seems like the president really doesn't want to be on the Korean Peninsula if he doesn't have to be. But look, isn't the long-term danger here that we denuke, if we can, North Korea, and we hand it to China? And China Finlandizes the Korean Peninsula. That would be a huge hit to U.S. deterrence. It would endanger Japan and endangers Taiwan. Um, can you give us any insight into the president's longer-term strategy well, here? Well, okay, so first of all, uh, let's go to the 5,500 year history of China. They have never invaded another nation. One that's of the not things, true. Vietnam. Well, look at Mongolia. the South, China, yeah. South okay. Sea right that's, now. That's, that's absolutely those, not okay, true. Okay, well, let me, let me finish. I'm talking about, well, okay, those were all defensive measures by China. What about what they're doing in the South China taking, Sea? Taking place. 
Okay, not not another nation. Okay, with the, with the Chinese, with oh, the Chinese, Vietnam with the China oil rigs, the Scarborough okay, Shoal, let, let Philippines. Me, let me, let me finish. Every one of every <laughs> one of those situations was a uh, reaction to an aggression that was happening on the other side. Did the Philippines we can, we can aggress? That. But there's no aggression no, in the no, South no, China it was, Sea. It was a fear. It was a fear of U.S. military forces in the region. Okay, that that that's actually what it was. And so, but let me just make my point, and then you can make yours. Uh, I don't I don't see that happening for a number of different reasons because the Chinese playbook right now is to compete economically with the world and to use their economic imperialism uh, more than a military strike force. Uh, what the Chinese are doing, if you go back to Graham Allison's book uh, about China and the situation with the United States, is they're doing the same thing uh, that we were doing with the Monroe Doctrine at the early part of uh, the 20th century with Teddy Roosevelt. And so they want to protect their region of the world. Um, and whether the United States likes it or not, a peaceful rise of China is not necessarily a bad thing for the United States. Does President Trump agree with that? Because if what is what essentially you're saying is that President Trump would do a deal with North Korea and allow China to dominate North Asia. No, the president's pushing back against China. I don't. I don't, I don't Let, see let's that. face I don't, it. Look I don't what they're doing. With, well, look the, what they're doing with trade right now. I think now. it's more. I think. I think my point is it's less about the military and it's more about trade parity with China. Well, it's also about the military in China because what, what's happening right now is China is setting up military bases all along the sea level across the world. They just set one up in Djibouti, which is obviously nowhere near China. And that's why Devin Nunes, the House uh, Intel chairman, is actually committee, is actually investigating China. So it's okay, not but, just trade but, with okay, China. But, okay, but it's but also, Maria, they're using my, their gains my, that they're gaining okay, but, economically and putting it toward their military complex. But, Mar Maria, in, in, in Graham Allison's book, Destined for War, he drew the parallel between what they're doing right now and what the United States was doing in our own hemisphere uh, in the early part of the 20th century. And so we have to be super careful here because we have different cultures, we have different political systems, uh, and we have to be very, very careful of imposing our culture and political system in that area of the world. Are you there kidding be, me? There you wouldn't, peace. You, uh, Anthony, I'm sorry, okay. but the U.S. Okay. The U.S. has protected global there, trade there and allowed be, the rise of democracies throughout there, Asia. That's there, a good thing. You can't equate uh, uh, us there can be with China. Key, how am I equating us with China. I'm talking about in their national interests, they are doing certain things what you're saying is to the protect their but country. What you're, saying, what you're I'm, essentially I'm saying, saying is the Chinese people, the North Korean people, don't want the same freedoms that we enjoy I'm, in the United I'm, States. I'm absolutely not saying that. You see, what you're, okay. what you're trying to do is you're trying to impose our system on a part of the world. That's Obama's that language. Our, that's, 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 that's exactly, that's not, that's, that's exactly that's not, Obama's language, 2009 okay, Cairo speech, okay, same okay. language. You, you, you may not like what I'm saying, but the way this thing is unfolding, you'll have peace on the North Korean Peninsula. There'll be a denuclearization. There will be eventual trade parity with, with the Chinese. And the United States will start again a uh, second American century. And where does that leave the theft of intellectual property <laughs> and forced transfer of technology? I mean, the, buying more stuff doesn't do anything for the real issue, which is their, the Chinese steal our intellectual property, and they don't even admit it. Okay, so just throwing that out there. Okay, so I, you know, I you could say we're going to have peace on that. That's got to be part of the future negotiation. Absolutely, right? and it is. Okay, and we're taking we're taking it one step at a time. We didn't even get to Iran <laughs> before the commercial break. That's we're going to talk about Iran. We have got to talk about Iran. Right. Good to see you, Anthony. Thank Good you so much, you. Anthony Scaramucci.